everybody. As promised, I'm here with my famous pasta sauce recipe. And I'm gonna give you a little background. So about seven years ago, I became enamored with the idea of like a slow cooked, all day cooked pasta sauce. Something that, you know, you could smell as you're cooking all day, like the old fashioned Italian home cooked recipe. And um, so over the years, I've kind of honed it. And the beauty of this recipe is I'm gonna show you the ingredients, but I'm gonna give you all the power in deciding how much of each ingredient you wanna use. So you get to say that you found this awesome recipe online, but you perfected it. <laughs> so um, we wanna start, so this is gonna go in a crock pot, this great big crock pot, all right? And it's gonna take at least six hours. So you wanna start in the morning or early in the, late, late in the morning, whatever. Um, but you wanna add about half the ingredients first. So I'm gonna show you all the ingredients that you need, and then we're gonna do the first half, and then I'm gonna come back and show you the last part of it. So first you're gonna need, of course, your tomato sauce, right? Every good pasta sauce has a tomato or alfredo or pesto base, right? So we're gonna do this big thing of sauce, Pour that in. I'm not gonna do too much sauce because as you're gonna see, I'm gonna add a lot of chunky ingredients to it. Then you're gonna add a can of diced tomatoes. All right, pour that in. Um, now I've experimented with using my own tomatoes like freshly cut, stewed, blanched, all that, and I didn't notice a difference between canned and fresh tomatoes. So it's up to you whether you wanna do the work of blanching and dicing your own homegrown tomatoes, however you wanna do it, or if you just wanna use canned and save yourself some time. And then you wanna add the tomato paste, all right? This is really thick, so you want to spoon it out into your crock pot. Now the reason why this is going to take so many hours in the crock pot is because you're going to be, um, you're going to be cutting up some onion and the onion is going to take hours to get soft. I've made the mistake before of putting, uh, of doing it for too, uh, too short of time with the onions and then they're still crunchy after a few hours. That's why I, I say it takes about six hours. Okay, I've chopped up a one medium sized yellow onion. Here's all the pieces. It's very fragrant. Um, in our home, we love flavor. We love onions, garlic, um, so this hits the spot and it's making me tear up. Okay, so you're gonna put the onions in and then if you have fresh garlic, you can mince that and put it in or you can save yourself some time and get something like this and just, you know, as much or as little as you want. And remember, during this season of a pandemic, you wanna add garlic and onion to your foods to boost your immune system. So depending on your preference, wow, my eyes are really watering. Um, depending on your preference and personal taste, add as little or as much garlic and onion as you want. But remember that the more, the better for your immune system at this time. Stir that up real good. Okay, before we turn our crock pot on, I'm gonna show you the first secret ingredient because as i promised this one is full of extra special secret ingredients so this one is butter okay butter this is salted butter this is gonna give i'm gonna put half half a stick of butter that's four tablespoons um this is gonna give your sauce a rich creamy hearty flavor um, that is just really awesome. And the second secret ingredient, this is gonna take some preparation on your part, is, unless you already have some on hand, 
bacon grease, all right? So when I, about seven years ago, got obsessed with this, perfecting this homemade pasta sauce recipe, I just Googled pasta sauce secret ingredients and I synthesized all the one, all the recipes that I found into this one. So you're gonna spoon out, or you're gonna cook bacon ahead of time and just save the bacon grease in the fridge. And this is gonna give a really great meaty, hearty flavor. Just add as much as you want. Um, this is gonna be a fatty sauce. Yeah. So I'm just adding two spoonfuls of that. Okay, the third secret ingredient is red cooking wine. This is gonna give it a robust flavor. And again, I'm gonna put the power in your hands and let you choose how much you wanna add. I really like to freestyle when I put together a recipe, so I'm just gonna pour about half a cup. Um, but tweak it, try different versions. You can try white wine. I think red wine goes well with tomatoes. So I'm just gonna pour this in. Yes, okay. And then we're gonna season with salt and pepper to taste. Got my salt. Pour that in. And then you can always adjust it as, um, as it's cooking if you think it needs more pepper. Get that in there. And then, um, I personally prefer oregano to basil. Some of you, if you like basil, uh, you grow your own, whatever, just know that um, if you're gonna use fresh basil or oregano, you're gonna wanna use more of it than if you use dried, because dried has been you know, dehydrated and the flavor is, um, is uh, concentrated in the dried form. So if you use fresh oregano, basil, that's great. Um, use more of it. And then my sister taught me this trick when you measure out how much you want to use, mush it up, like kind of powder it, pulverize it in your hands to release more of the flavor as you're adding it in. So I'm putting that in there. I'm gonna stir it up, I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna set it for low for about six hours. And then I wanna show you guys what the other ingredients that we're gonna put in at the end. Hey, we are gonna add ground beef. This is what I like to call mystery meat because you can't see into the packaging. I prefer to see the meat when I pick it, but um, Michael was like, this is cheaper and it has more fat. I like to choose the fatty ground beef because more fat equals more flavor. So I've already added butter has fat. I've already added bacon grease, lots of fat. That's all gonna translate into flavor. And then the higher percentage of fat in your ground beef is gonna add even more flavor. So it's gonna be really hearty, it's gonna be really rich, it's gonna be really delicious and savory. But we don't wanna add this at the beginning because guess what happens? I learned this the hard way. If you put the ground beef in at the beginning, it will have no taste when it's done. It will taste like nothing. So what I do is I wait till the last about half hour, then I ground the beef, I'm sorry, not ground it, sorry. I brown the beef, I brown the beef in a pan, and you know, you can add salt, pepper, garlic powder, whatever, onion powder, add that in at the end. And in the last hour, you can also saute some delicious mushrooms. We love mushrooms in our home. So um, yeah, in the last hour, you can just slice them, saute them with butter, with that red cooking wine again. You can add salt and pepper and garlic, just make some really flavorful, delicious, um, great mushrooms that have protein and have a good bite to it and add those in in the last hour of your crock pot. And so yeah, you're gonna set the crock pot to low, for at least six hours. Start it in the morning, it'll be ready for dinner and everyone will love it. So here's my slow cooker. It's at four hours and 57, 56 minutes left now on low. 
And I'm just gonna check on it. Usually you don't wanna take the lid off of a crock pot because it releases the heat, but you are gonna want to stir it up occasionally. So you can see the butter hasn't quite melted all the way, but this whitish part is the bacon grease. It's starting to melt, starting to incorporate, starting to really smell so good. And I'm gonna introduce you to the final secret ingredient. The final secret ingredient is sugar. <laughs> if you've never heard of this or done this before, it's gonna sound very, very weird. Why would you put sugar in pasta sauce? I'll tell you why. Because the sugar helps combat the acidity of the tomato sauce, the tomato paste, the diced tomatoes. So it's gonna add, it's gonna soften it. So you're adding a lot of fat, you're adding a lot of flavor, seasonings, and then the sugar just cuts the acidity down. So it's more of a warm and not sharp type of experience for you. So you can add about a spoonful of that and you can you know, add more to taste to um, how you prefer it. So I really encourage you to experiment with this recipe and add the things that you like if you wanna add bell pepper, for example, or if you're vegan or vegetarian, you don't wanna add the meat or the bacon grease or the butter, it's up to you. But these are the things that I like and my family really likes. Okay, so I've added the sugar, I've stirred that in. And you can see that my crock pot's only about halfway full at this point. I'm intentionally leaving space for that ground beef because I'm gonna add about two pounds of it and the mushrooms at the end. So I don't wanna overload my crock pot with sauce and not have room for all the things I'm gonna add in at the end. Since my crock pot now has about five hours left, I have set a timer for four hours and that's when I'll start the um, mushrooms. And I am 34 weeks today, so I thought I would show you the bump. <laughs> Sorry, I am still mainly getting away with not wearing maternity clothes, but uh, yeah, that's this is 34 weeks. And um, I'll, I'll also add that you can refrigerate this for maybe like a week, and then if you have the leftover still, just put it in a Ziploc freezer bag, and it freezes really well. We got some nice chopped up baby portobello mushrooms that I'm about to saute now that we have an hour left before the sauce is ready. And then in half an hour, I'm gonna add the ground beef. I'm gonna brown it and then I'm gonna add the ground beef. All right, here's my beautiful sauteed mushrooms. They've got garlic, salt, pepper, and I'm about to add the magical red cooking wine and that's gonna reduce them a little bit. And then I'm gonna stick them in the crock pot. All right, I've got my mystery meat ground beef here, two pounds worth, and I'm gonna be browning this on the stove. I'm also gonna add oregano, salt, pepper, and more garlic. Okay, all the beef is browned. I'm gonna add it, this is so much, two pounds. Ooh, it's a lot, it's good. Into my sauce. There's Michael. It's good, lots of beef there. And stir it up. I'm gonna let the flavors meld for about another half hour. And while that's going, I'm gonna cook some angel hair pasta because we love the silky texture of angel hair. And then we'll eat it. Okay, this is a quick tip um, for boiling pasta. If you use a really wide but shallow pan, you don't have to use so much water as a really huge pan, and then the water boils faster. Um, with angel hair, it's only gonna take about four and a half minutes to cook the pasta. Okay, this is it, it's done. It's all simmering, and it is a huge batch. That'll last us a good long while. And here it is in the bowl with the angel hair pasta. This is my favorite thing that she makes, and she didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> <laughs>